Hey guys, welcome to the second part uh, of this uh, tutorial about JavaScript and Jitter. So in this part we are going to actually build um, the particle system. So uh, let's start with our previous uh, JavaScript file. So from the previous tutorial I just uh, added uh, this window of position here. So the window is going to appear here in this part of my screen so it doesn't appear always on top of my JavaScript file which was annoying. Then I change a bit the size of the window just to have it um, a bit smaller. Yeah, okay, so actually um, I want to add another property to the window which is called uh, depth buffer. I want to set this to zero because we are going to work with the uh, transparency. So I don't want the depth buffer to be active because that would uh, um, eliminate the transparency effect. Okay, so let's delete our shape here. Let's delete also this into the draw function. Actually, let's create our Q meter. I want it to be quite fast. Let's say 10. This way, we're going to call the draw function. Okay. So, uh, the first thing that we want to make. Um, is to create a um, um, GitGL sketch object. So let's create it because we are going to uh, draw our particles with a sketch object. I find uh, that the sketch object and the JavaScript uh, in Max they really go well together because it allows us to do things that uh, in um, plain Max they would be quite difficult. So let's create this object. It's called Jit GL Sketch. And this is called our context is called JS. Then since we are going to work with transparency, let's give the object the uh, blend enable one property. Okay. Okay, and now what I want to do is to create a class. Uh, another another class called the uh, vector because we are going to work with the uh, vectors inside um, our particle system. So our vector class needs to have three dimensional coordinates. So x let's initialize this with zero, y also zero, and z z also zero. And then our vector class also needs to have a function. In JavaScript, functions inside uh, classes are called methods. So to add a method to, to an object, to a class, we can do it uh, in different ways. I'm going to show you the first way, which is that we simply name here uh, a property and then we assign a function to it give it uh, an argument, which is um, uh, this function takes a vector object, so from the same class. So we're going to say that this x is going to be summed uh, to itself and uh, vector point x. Then this y is going to be the same and the same goes for the z. Okay, so since we are inside a function here, we need to add uh, semicolons. It's not that we are defining properties like there, because this is inside uh, the function, the method. Okay, so now let's create uh, our uh, actual particle class and I will show you, we are going to create this with a constructor. So let's create a function called particle and let's say 
Let's give it a location property and we are going to use the object create method to assign it to a vector to create um, to make it a vector object so this velocity also is a vector and we need the, also the acceleration vector Oops. then we need to set uh, the location to to a point uh, up in our window so for example oh sorry cheat location um, this location point y the the starting point um, of the particles need to be something right uh, like there so the y needs to be something around 0 0.7 since uh, 0 it will be the center of the window 0 0.7 is somewhere there okay then we need to set a value for the acceleration point y and this is going to be a negative number and this is going to be really small you're going to see why then we need to set also an initial velocity point uh, x for our for our um, particle so it will uh, kind of um, uh, just not fall down but also go a bit on the left or the right side of the window so we give it uh, we use the math random method that we used it also in the previous tutorial I'm going to multiply this by 2 and subtract 1 so we are going to have a range that is uh, in the minus 1 1 range now we are going to divide this by 17, which is just a number that I that I took experimenting. Otherwise, the velocity would be too big. Uh, this goes also for the y. Let's exactly copy the same thing. So the particles maybe they are going to go up in the beginning and they are going to fall down because of the acceleration. And then we need to add another property to the particle class, which is uh, lifespan, because the particles are going to have um, a fixed lifespan uh, after the, um, the which they will uh, simply disappear. Then, now we need to add um, methods to our particle class. As I showed you in the previous tutorial, we when we create a class with a constructor, to add new properties or uh, methods to this class, we have to use the prototype uh, keyword. So, particle point uh, prototype uh, point uh, update. This is our update function. Oh, sorry. Our update function for our um, particle class. And in this function, we are going to set. Uh, to use the add method from the vector class here and we are going to add to the velocity this acceleration so the acceleration of the current uh, instance of the object so the current uh, uh, velocity instance of the object is going to be summed uh, with the current acceleration current instance acceleration now we are going to sum the um, velocity to the location. So in this way, um, yeah, we are, the, the location of our particles is going to be updated uh, in base of the velocity, but also the velocity is going to be updated um, by the acceleration. So they are continuously going to accelerate through the window until they disappear. So in the update function, we also need to reduce the lifespan. 
So we are going to reduce the lifespan at every frame by two, two values. So in the beginning it is 255 and uh, at every frame we are going to subtract two from this value. Then let's create uh, the display function. So particle prototype point uh, display, this is function. We are going to use the sketch object here inside this function, so this method. So my sketch point uh, move to, so we are going to move uh, the position of our uh, drawing sketch to this particle location, point x. It needs, um, this is actually a method from the, my from the GTGL sketch object and it needs three values for the three dimensional coordinates. So this point location point y and this point location point z. Okay, then we are going to create a variable called alpha and this is going to be equal to this lifespan, so the current, uh, the lifespan of the current instance, um, divided by 255, so now is it the age uh, 01, and we can use this to set the color of the current particle. So we're going to use the GL color method, and we are going to start with a, a kind of a gray color with this alpha value. So they are going to disappear uh, when at every frame the alpha is going to be reduced. Okay, so let's actually draw our particles with a circle function. It's going to be quite small, like 0 0.02. And I also like to do frame circles, so let's um, a bit a bit darker, so for example, 0, 0 with the alpha. And also we need to set the GL line width for the frame circle. And then we can draw our frame circle 0 0.02, okay. So, oh, we need semicolons after uh, after creating actually our class and after adding functions to the class. So I forgot, but we need them. Now let's create another function called uh, run. And in this function, we are simply going to call the update function and the display function. Okay, and let's add uh, another method to this class, which is, uh, is dead. So in this function, we are going to check if uh, uh, this instance of the particle has reached the uh, the, um, the zero lifespan, so it is actually dead. So in this case we return true from this function, else we return false. Okay. And now we can uh, actually create our particles. So let's create uh, particles array. So we are going to put all um, the instances of our particle class into an array. So let's create it, particles array, this is an array. Let's create total number of particles like 100 to start. And then we need to create uh, our JavaScript function setup. So this is not a function that's uh, it's inside our particle class. This is simple 
global function defined uh, in the global space of this JavaScript file. So let's create a for loop var e equal to zero, e uh, less than total, e plus plus. Okay, and let's push, use the push method from the array uh, class, JavaScript array class, and let's create a new particle. So we can you can use the new construct uh, new keyword because the particle has a a constructor. And after that, let's simply call the um, setup function here in the global space. So this function is going to be called uh, the, when whenever we compile the, the file. And then in our draw function, let's first of all push another particle at the beginning of every frame because some particles are going to die. So we can push uh, some more of them to, to fill again the array because uh, every time they're going to die, let's create another one. So let's create a for loop, but in this case, we are going to start with the uh, E equal to P array point length minus one. And we are going to go back into the, into the array from the end to the start. And this is because our uh, method, uh, our algorithm to erase the particles, it works better if we do it uh, this way, uh, because uh, this is actually really well explained into the Nature of Code book. So for a deeper understanding, you can uh, go and uh, read the Daniel Schiffman explanation, which is surely better than everything I could give you. So, um, for every particle in the array, let's call the array the run uh, method of the particle, so update and display. And then, if uh, this uh, this current particle is dead, so let's call the is dead method. We are going to erase this particle from the array. And to do this, we use the splice method of the array object in JavaScript. And uh, it needs uh, an index to which uh, select the, the object to delete or the element to delete and then how many elements uh, you want to, to delete and uh, just one in this case. Okay, so then my render arrays, my render draws up, but we don't have to forget about the my sketch point uh, reset method because the sketch is going to accumulate all the drawing commands that we give him and it needs to be resetted every frame in order to not uh, in order to not overload the the command uh, list for the sketch object. So let's see actually if we this is working. Obviously, it's not working. There's a problem with the vector here. Okay, let's try again. And yes, it is working. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, I, it's a bit too few particles. So, for example, at the beginning of every frame, we can actually call three of them. We can refill the the vector, the array with uh, more of them. So, for example, three of them. This is a bit better. Okay, so. That was it. We created our particle system, simple particle system inside uh, JavaScript. And in further tutorials, we are actually going to, um, to make it a bit more complex and to see what else we can do with JavaScript and uh, Jitter. So see you on the next tutorial. Ciao guys.